<laughs> All right, and we're live, guys. Uh, so, welcome to the third episode of RTC podcast. Uh, today, today we have uh, special guests uh, from Flowbox. We're going to be talking with with Mika Valencia. Uh, and yeah, I want I want to know what is what is all the hype around around this software, uh, and we're going to be talking about our our, our collaboration. So RTC has been has been closing, uh, closing collaborating with 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 Flowbox to help develop this tool, and I want you guys to know all about this. Um, first of all, I would like to thank you all for 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 all the views on our on our videos we had on the first podcast. Around a thousand, a thousand guys uh, watching this video, um, and on the second, on the second one that we did, we had fifteen hundred people viewing this video. So it's it's it, it's reaching far, uh, and I'm really glad to 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 have you guys. And this is this this series that we're going to start doing now. Uh, it's it's as well to promote the community, to promote artists and developers that are that are that are working uh, on this industry. And that actually do do something special, the unsung heroes uh, of this community. So, so yeah, guys, let me let me introduce you, Miko. Hello. Hi, hi. hi How's it going? Hi. Hello, <laughs> everybody. I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> so, welcome to welcome to this podcast. Uh, totally unfiltered and without any safety nets. So this is yeah, everything can go wrong, but but we are yeah. Feel it. We're fine. We're fine. So as long as as long as we're trying, we're good. Um, so all right. Um, tell me, tell me everything, man. Uh, how how did Flowbox uh, begin, and what are you guys? What are you guys doing? All right. I mean, I mean, well, it, this is this is pretty pretty. Let's say long story, of course, but I'll try to make it short. I mean, this is um, uh, this is something we um, we kind of started around. Three, two, three years ago, um, uh, the idea, let's say, behind it, of course, came from from some kind of crazy, crazy first uh, approaches, first ideas that uh, were initially uh, created by me and my uh, friend, who's technical director at. Uh, we were working together at the studio here in Poland. Um, this is uh, the studio was called Al Alvernia, a pretty big studio here in Poland, uh, southern southern Poland, and. Um, we were working together very closely, you know, trying to put these things together, trying to, you know, kind of bend all available tools to our needs. Uh, you know, there was a lot of uh, things to, to do in terms of pipeline, of course, uh, building tools for 3D, for CG, for compositing. And at some point, uh, my friend uh, Wojciech uh, mentioned that he wants to really push it, you know, from, from other perspective. He wants to go for, uh, for new development. He wants to build something really, really huge and flexible and kind of uh, the tool for the future. And that was the idea about, uh, you know, visual programming, mm -hmm. which is, I think, very interesting because we usually when we when you code uh, and do you develop tools, you have to go for C++, for to Python, to many mm -hmm. things. And th this is pretty, pretty difficult, especially for artists, right? So if, we, if I... I'm I'm not a programmer. I'm not a developer. So, so we <laughs> I used I used to be <laughs> I used to be one, <laughs> and I kind of <laughs> run away from that. <laughs> I mean, this, this is un uncharted territory for me. But uh, but maybe not now. Maybe now I can tell more about it. But but you know, at that time I was pretty you know shocked that okay, it's huge. It it, it involves a lot of you know the knowledge and kind of uh, you know time, of course. It's pretty tedious process to crafting some, you know, even simple tools, uh, but it's very powerful. So, so uh, I know I knew how how powerful it is, but you know that was a question, you know, how quickly we can get something, uh, because I was of course impatient. I was of course I wanted everything <laughs> immediately, you know, ready. So I asked my friend, okay, can you give me, you know, something better than Nuke, right, like in one week or something. <laughs> was laughing and telling me, no, man, this is like long development. Uh, this is like huge, huge thing. So, so you, so, so you guys developed a, a new platform. That's it. So, a new platform that can that can work with with a with a lot of stuff. So, develop whatever you guys want. Yes, that was that's the idea of a visual programming approach, where you can build a node-based system that process data. If we talk about data, we talk about the, any type of data. It can be, you know, image, it can be sound, it can be, you know, numbers just like that, uh, any type of data. So uh, out of this, uh, Wojtek, Wojtek crafted the, the very foundation of Flowbox, and I think that was the most important part 
for us and for the future. I think this is something that uh, will will show the potential in the next, you know, release by release, what we're showing to, to, to you, mm -hmm. to your artist. I think you will see the benefits of that. Because um, Flowbook is not only about the, let's say, the one tool, one slider, and one property window where you can just, you know, drag a couple slider, that's it, render image and forget about it. Mm -hmm. It's about, it, this is really open and flexible environment. And what we're showing today uh, in the Flowbox 1.x, let's say 1.5, 1.6, and et cetera, mm -hmm. this is just a glimpse of what's inside the platform. Uh, so uh, I think uh, what we did at the beginning was kind of a bit crazy, of course, but it paid off really well. <laughs> so my role, actually, when I when I took over as a CEO of the company, my, my role was actually to uh, to craft this and kind of narrow this huge idea, huge vision, narrow it to the to some you know specific tools, and specific needs that that's present on the market, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we need, right? So my my question was, of course, I need a lot of things. I need CG. I need uh, you know compositing cool tools. I need plenty of things, but um, then we realized that there is a little, little there, are, there are little stuff, little niche, let's say, which is rotoscopy. And we quickly realized that, man, this is something that was really untouched for the last 10, 15 years. Yeah, that's true. And, it, and it's, pro it's probably a nice, a, nice, a nice way to ease in into the market uh, and, and, and kind of test and prove, prove the, the solid grounds of the tool, right? True. This is this is important. You know, we we went to states, of course, to visit my friends from from different studios, mostly from LA, and we spoke with uh, DD. We spoke with uh, Method. We spoke with plenty of, uh, let's say, all my network. Let's say we we spent some time with them, mm -hmm. talking about, let's say, okay, what is a good broad, what is a good start, and and from from our discussion was clear that. Um, Yes, definitely, definitely rotoscopy is, uh, is something unique, uh, not only from, let's say, the perspective that uh, it is a manual process still, mostly manual process, and uh, it, there, there's a lot of things that can be improved, that's one thing, but also from the perspective that uh, rotoscopy involves entire compositing in one tool, because you have to merge layers together, you have to mm, manage gizmos, splines, you have to create a proper rasterizer, uh, some, you know, the engine to rasterize mm -hmm. the images. Uh, you have to deal with the alpha channel, RGBA, and uh, so there's a lot of aspects, and it's it's pretty complex, uh, you know, rotoscopy tool, let's say. So, so yeah, absolutely, the, the art, the, the art of the art of doing it, it's uh, it's it's usually it's usually talked about. Oh, there's something there's something easy, something simple. Well, it's n it's not that simple. It's simple that in, in the matter of people usually do it in a, in, a, in an easy way, but it's quite complex, and especially behind the softwares that that are. Uh, that, that develop the ways of doing rotoscopy, uh, intelligent ways of, of developing this, um, it's, quite, it's quite difficult, it's quite difficult, yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. This is, this is, about, uh, this is about so many, so many aspects are in, in included into, into roto tool, so um, into roto, rotoscopy task. So, uh, so I realized that if we can manage, if we manage to do that really well, if we can deliver some good quality roto tool set, um, uh, it is gonna be a proof that we can, probably go beyond we can go forward and you know develop tools around and start focusing on other maybe aspects like compositing color correction you know uh, i don't know conforming you know vr tools and all this fancy stuff but it was for us kind of you know okay let's nice test <laughs> do this properly let's do it really well let's show the potential right so and of course on the way uh, we're gonna learn a lot right so that was two years ago and when, when we started yes and uh, i'm I must say I'm really proud of my team. My, my, my team, it's, it's not a big team. Uh, we are now seven people here in Krakow, Poland. Um, and just to be clear, we are in Poland, in south, southern Poland, <laughs> uh, which is not very famous uh, right, right now from, let's say, this is not the developer, let's say, uh, VFX developer, let's say, kind of area. But what is important, Krakow, uh, which is a beautiful city, of course, all of you are invited here, uh, come over. But uh, Krakow is a Silicon Valley of Poland. Uh, ah, nice. So, yeah, so there's a lot of great universities, uh, so a lot of technical, you know, uh, people coming uh, from this area, and they are super talented, really. So I think this is this is uh, important for uh, to, so you so you know that this is kind of um, mm -hmm. this is very good, uh, strong, uh, strong environment. People focused on development, right, uh, and and from an aspect. Cool. So, we, so where where did you, well, how did you how did you go in in okay in, in choosing choosing Roto, but then you probably like assessed assessed the market, uh, 
and see what is what is what what is happening in there. So we have we have a a, a couple of of leader tools that have been working for for quite a few years that have been slowly updating the softwares. So mm-hmm. what made you what made you uh, try to do something different? Uh, what what is Flowbox objective with 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 this? Yeah, I mean, this is very interesting because, of course, uh, at the very beginning when we started with that, uh, that was okay. We had some some cool ideas uh, how we can uh, move along with some some features, some some new new kind of approaches. But uh, and at the beginning, of course, we were a little bit, you know, how to say, unhumble. I don't know if it's English. That yeah. There's a word like yeah. <laughs> so we were like, oh yeah, we can do that. I mean, this is easier. We can we can do it. You know, automatic. It's gonna be cool and fast, no problem. And during the during the time, I mean, when we started development, uh, we learned a lot. And I think uh, I I have to I can clearly say today, but I'm I'm really I'm really uh, kind of uh, I'm I'm an admirer I'm admiring yep. yes I'm admiring the uh, the effort and the development uh, w- which was kind of uh, made with uh, Mocha, Silhouette, Nuke, all these companies, what they achieved you know over the years. Yes, we we all bitching about this. We uh, yeah. this is clear, yeah. We on the daily basis we bitching about Nuke, Silver Mocha, all the software we usually bitch. Okay, this is not working. I'm, I I don't like this. I want it to be different. But there's a lot you of know, work involved, right? <laughs> but this huge yeah, this really, takes a lot of time, yeah. right? And I really I really appreciate that. I really this is what what the founder and DD what they made with the Nuke till now. It's amazing what they did with this package. Yeah, they gave us kind of you know really powerful you know. Uh, kind of you know robust you know environment to to process this huge huge amount of data and I really I really appreciate that and I learn a lot you know we learn a lot also also as a team you know developing software learn from from them right looking at their achievements the same with uh, with Mocha Imaginary System the Pana Tracker is amazing and so we learn a lot from that from that we were looking you know how they approach the topics uh, same with Fusion same with Silhouette same with After Effects there's a uh, tons of great ideas. The thing is that, uh, of course, it's it's about time. It's about how we work and how it cha- it's, it's, it is changing over time. So um, yeah, let's say ten years ago we needed let's say big packages of tools and we were wanted to have everything in one place. Mm-hmm. It's changed, right? So after let's say five ten years, now we work globally. We go connect online. We don't think. We don't need to ex- exactly to do everything in one place. So the, the good example is Flame, right? Flame was uh, designed for this one big, you know, stop shop for for everything. And so, as soon as uh, you know the market changed and After Effects became pretty powerful, you can do everything on a GPU and just quick, quick uh, solutions. So the Flame went into kind of problems with you know, uh, okay, maybe we we don't have a fit to the market uh, because the market changed. Uh, people want to do uh, everything offline. They don't need to go. They, do, they, they don't need to big, uh, buy a big suite of tools. So, um, so yeah. So this this is kind of new scenario. And I think I think you know for the last ten years, mm-hmm. uh, fifteen years, I don't see any like huge development in this area. I mean, compositing, uh, any any around any around specific processes like roto or maybe color color correction. Well. Blackmagic Design, this is a good example that they try to push something, some new ideas here like this going with freemium software, like, like Resolve uh, for mm-hmm. Core which is very interesting, very good approach because this, this, this kind of you know, movement in, uh, in industry, it's, it's alive now. Yeah? We don't stack with one, uh, one solution, we have something uh, very approachable mm-hmm. uh, and we like that. So we were thinking about how to do it in fl- with Flowbox, and the idea was that definitely we want to bring something up, uh, affordable and, and kind of flexible, and also we don't want a big, we, we don't want to compete with Nuke here or or any like big uh, big suite of tools. We want to just focus on single process. And focus on yeah, just creating creating something for specialists, right? This is what this is what I felt what I felt when I when I when I met you guys like a year ago. And you know that I'm very transparent in in regards of uh, of, of softwares and opinions. Like it was, I, I I I I told you straight away what was my issue. Like you showed me the software, like one of the early 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 versions of, of Flowbox, and yeah. I said like, dude, I'm 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 confused, but but 
as soon as as soon as we start talking and 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 you show me the potential of what you guys were developing and especially how open you guys were to to opinion from the artists uh, i've i've never had an opportunity to to talk with the developer uh, as 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 close as the especially outside developers from uh, from from different communities than the the company space because uh, I, i i worked with 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 with, with alex Uh, back at back at Dinek to develop Noodle, uh, but but this was very interesting. So so a developer from from an outside company um, suddenly is a, is approachable to the point of of listening to to what I have to say, uh, and I'm still one of the few that care about about Roto. So I moved on to compositing, but I still care about this community. And I was like, oh, actually you you, you are listening to us. So what is what is this this thing about listening to this community? I mean, this is this is very important because uh, I think, yes, we spent some time, you know, working, um, working, let's say, separated, kind of locked, right? We, we we developed internally. Of course, we had a lot of discussion with with partners like you, you like yourself, and of course with uh, with other other compositors and and supervisors. But we had to spend a quite amount of time, you know, developing this first uh, alpha version, this first build, and. Which is like a very rough version that we gonna polish and we're gonna you know improve of course mm -hmm. over time, and uh, mm, I think I think for us was at the beginning very important that we can uh, we can kind of confirm that uh, these uh, initial ideas about this roto tool set are are good uh, kind of uh, it was kind of good bet because it's usually at the beginning is a it's a kind of bet right yeah, you, yeah. bet you're the gambling case, you're gambling on on, on on the market and the reaction of people. <laughs> Yes, yes, plenty of it, plenty of, of these, you know, uh, kind of uh, uh, guesses, right? I'm, I'm trying to guess, okay, we're going to work. So our bet was that we're going to work um, manually, uh, let's say, using, I mean, using, using uh, user input, which is very important. Mm -hmm. So and that was our kind of guess that, okay, we don't want to... Uh, we don't want to kind of lose this connection with the user, so we want the user to be able to draw, to to kind of guide the tool where he wants it to process data for him, mm -hmm. and so that was kind of first approach. So we started with this drawing and snapping, right, implementing that into Flowbox. Of course, around the around this drawing and snapping, which is cool and great, I'm going to show it to you in in a minute. Yeah. But around it, we re we realized that this this hundred features around it, which which are super important, uh, we discovered that we can improve them a lot. So yeah. that was kind of a great discovery, especially when we were talking together, right? Yeah. And we do. Yeah. And you showed me, let's say, point by point. Okay, look, this this area. This of, is what I of, need. Exactly. <laughs> this is what I need for years, and <laughs> and I've never yeah. been listened to. Man, I'm really happy that you are so crazy about it because this is, yeah. You know, We we are crazy about this our you know development all here the architecture we're building this but you are so crazy about this uh, every detail you work with right uh, on daily basis with, with software so really 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 passionate about it and and usually usually one of the one of the things that 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 people people ask me straight away is like oh is is suddenly Roto going to be automatic so did they find did did they did they reinvent the wheel I said like no no. I don't think that that Roto will ever be 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 automatic. You have this uh, this this light field, the lightro cameras, and all this stuff that is capturing depth and 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 all of this extra information. But I don't think Roto is gonna be is gonna be is gonna be moving uh, into that direction. Like we need we need perfection, we need efficiency, we need detail. And 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 this was the the thing that captured my attention. It's like oh, you are very oriented to to this to this detail. To, to perfection, to how good can a tool can be. Uh, so this was, this was very interesting. So how, wh why did you choose to go into this direction of manual instead of going into the, the light field option? Well, you know, the idea is that, uh, that uh, just, just to be honest and just to tell you about, uh, let's say, the future, um, where we're going, where we're heading to, is that definitely the automatization is, is, is coming. Right, but uh, but this automatization is, uh, on, on the many fronts, is uh, developed today Uh, you know, all over the globe, right? That there, there are teams working with uh, with different, you know, um, ideas, right? We have this uh, deep image learning. We have the cameras like Lightro and other depth uh, light field cameras, uh, just grabbing more data. Uh, we have couple couple ideas about it, but uh, what is important, we we still think that uh, 
even if let's say after 5, 10, 15 years we will get there with some okay improvements with algorithms, uh, deep image learning may maybe, uh, maybe cameras will get there with uh, with the let's say uh, com how to say mm, they're gonna be small enough to so we can, the DOPs can start working with these cameras right so they are not like like a track huge and then uh, again the quality we can get from these cameras they will, will, will get better that's all good we, I, I really wish we, we will get there but it doesn't mean that we need uh, a proper professional tool set to process this data to and uh, again manually correct this what we need to guide these tools these algorithms and uh, all tech which is in the background yep. I think the, the place for this type of automatization and kind of uh, automatic uh, solutions is to be kind of hidden be, uh, below, right? Waiting for our orders. That's what I say. Mm -hmm. That's what, what we think about Flowbox. So if I, for example, now draw a line today uh, to do the snap option to snap function in Flowbox, okay, uh, you know, the points are snapping to the position. I can show, you in a, uh, show it in a minute. Mm -hmm. But usually we, I got the question, okay, uh, do you have the edge detect? Because the line looks really good. I mean, the, the, the points are matching. The line is there. Cool. Is there a de edge detection? I must worry. No, no, there is no edge detection. <laughs> Draw the line that you like to draw. Yeah, you still you still need to draw. You still need to do it. You still need to do roto. It's just like we're, we're, we're talking about efficiency and how good can you can you can you can you do that point? How good can you move that spline? And and cutting time, cutting costs in doing this. But but I, yeah, it's, it's interesting that I, that I, I still don't find any any way of doing this uh, in an automatic way, man. <laughs> Yeah, it, you know, the, I mean, edge detection can can be, in, in, uh, let's say, implemented as well. So we, we will implement edge detection. We will implement uh, tracking, be, you know, behind. So it will help you to, to analyze the movement. We will integrate keying, of, of course, as well. So there's a plenty of great ideas how we can combine a couple of, you know, you know algorithms and, uh, and kind of the, uh, technical developments to help you, to assist you. But this is all about assist, being a assistant yeah. for, for, your, for your, what you want to do with the, with the image, right? Uh, and I think what we did at the beginning, I mean, the snapping and drawing and giving this flexibility in the interface, it's a very important first step. So as we, as, as we are here, ready with these tools, and you, you as a user artist can, take, can tell us, okay, I like it. I, I feel comfortable, you know, drawing, snapping, and moving the shapes around. If you feel comfortable with the environment, I think this is the first, the most important step. Because yep. even if I have super cool techno technology, if I give you this in a really awkward interface, so it takes a lot of time to set it up, work with, uh, with slow performance, what is the point? I mean, it's, it's not gonna really save the day. So, because you have to spend hours, uh, you know, with the software, uh, so it has to be, has to be just, you know, working properly. It needs to be. It needs to be good looking. To be honest, like, like the, fir the first thing that I that, that I felt, uh, and it was like, oh man, this this looks nice. This looks fresh. Uh, I I I love the idea of the, of, of of nodes and, and and all those rings around the nodes and stuff. Uh, and of and of course, I, I I needed more than that because just 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 something visual was not enough. So I, so I would like you to show it to show us a bit about about this tool and 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 how how it works. Uh, just just for people to be aware of what it is, uh, what is being developed, and what is your ideas for the future. Cool, cool. Just just share my screen if you can. Yep. Let there me know if it's yeah. Uh, it's all there. We got it. Okay, yeah. cool. All right. So so uh, okay. So I would just go very quickly, you know, through the through the let's say basics here because I don't think uh, it's it's uh, we need to spend too much time on that, but. Uh, I would just try to focus on some differences, you know, so what's what's important here. Um, so this environment uh, here, which is welcome screen, is important because uh, it's, it's of course, uh, kind of growing, you know, place where we bring this um, uh, collaboration element here in the future, um, where you can connect uh, multiple users at the same time and you can join some someone else project. This is very cool. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, think, so you can be yeah. in different facilities, and you can be collaborating, almost like a, almost like a a, a synesing call, uh, and 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 you you're working together or showing someone what you mean. So kind of a, a review tool. 
Yes, yes, exactly. I mean, this is this is very important because it allows you to actually work together, to review together, uh, you know, the image and the platform and the and entire architecture allows you to do that. I will show that in a minute uh, cool. because uh, let's go through first to the tool set, uh, showing the tool set, cool. and then, then at the end I will show you, you know how we can how we can uh, kind of uh, connect, uh, which is cool. So uh, going on here, I mean, pr I mean, if you go to the settings, I think the very important part is. To, to be able to customize your key shortcuts, right? So, so this is ready here um, because if you come from Silhouette Nuke, uh, Mocha Nuke environment, you need to customize what you mm. need. So that's the important part, and, and you can do that. That's the first thing. If you go to the general settings, you see this is pretty modest. Mm, just cache, just auto save. But a very important part about auto save and you know protecting your work, your projects. Mm -hmm. I think this is unique because I haven't seen it in another app. We are saving your action, uh, sorry, your, your setup, your, your project per action, not per minute. This is important because we managed to, to develop it the way that it doesn't slow down your performance and also with every action. That's interesting. Uh, we, yes, it's interesting because, uh, you, to be honest, since alpha version of this software, I never lost even one move, one stroke, one point in my project. Never. Mm -hmm. So if it crashes, of course it happens sometime. If you, I don't know, you have a power loss, power loss, no problem. Just mm -hmm. start again and your project is waiting. If we experience during this demo, if you experience crash, we will, you will see that uh, with yeah. me. Yeah, Maybe it's fine, not. man. This is live. It's developing. It's a work in progress. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, 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 it's a live, uh, you know, uh, element. Okay, I went, to the, I went to the interface just to show you the... Uh, and uh, you know the basics of the interface and what's different here. Uh, I think what's what is very important to understand at the beginning about Flowbox is that we process full frame. So there is no proxy yet in Flowbox. So uh, what what is in cache? If I hit play here, uh, what is in cache? Okay, let me just. Uh, okay, I think I just got a bit. Oh yeah. Okay, it's real time. It's going probably a little bit slower because I'm streaming on two monitors right now. <laughs> I don't think see this the same, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's real time. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it's real time. So uh, so what we got here is full frame. This is important because if we bring 4K, 6K, right? Up to 4K, you get uh, real time playback. You know, be, you know, above that, let's say 6K, 8K, it gets slower. Uh, of course, depend on the setup. I'm on a laptop right now, so I don't have a strong machine, but. Uh, 4K should be really well. Like well, and, to, and 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 to be honest, n it's still nowadays, it's still to come the day that we need to constantly be working, be working on 4K plates. Uh, from yeah. from 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 my experience in the industry, I've I've done the only the only 5K plates was Christopher Nolan's one. So all all the all the IMAX stuff. Apart from that, yeah. it's still 2K, two and a half K. That's it. It's pretty much it. Yeah. Which I which I think is okay. I mean, of course, I don't think we can avoid that. You know, the going. Yeah, into, yeah, into it's going there. It's going there for sure. Especially if, if we start, you know, touching, you know, VR topic, and yeah, this is become, it becomes really crazy <laughs> because we go like 16K, you know, right off the bat. So, so okay, so this is uh, this is uh, you know the interface full frame. But what is also important is that uh, because we process full frame, uh, we also try to keep the performance uh, to be in good performance. So, so this is what you work here with, which is let's say the source file uh, and the shapes. Uh, is is real time uh, performing in real time, right? So you don't have to be worried that okay, let's say if you move the point, right, like that, you see any any slowdown, right? Uh, just to just in a comparison, if you see the the, the window on the right, which is uh, actually my roto output hmm. uh, with uh, shapes and let's say color background for my QC, uh, it doesn't render in real time here. So if I move it, it it, it renders like right, but yep. what is important during the work you have real time, right? So you can focus on. Uh, that is that is that is really interesting. It's almost like a um, a debug mode that you have in there. Yeah, it's it's important because uh, what we got here is that you can set up multiple uh, viewers, right? And and you can uh, process this. Uh, for example, here you can stabilize your view, so you can focus on the shape you're working with, which is nose in this case. You can stabilize it like with tools here and check this. You see, uh, only this shape. On the second viewer, you can see it independently, like you how you want. Right? That's nice. So and you are you are, are you are you stabilizing uh, that shape through through the through through a tracker? 
Uh, well, currently I got the tracking inside the inside the let's say the um, my roto container, so mm -hmm. there is a tracking. But what is important in Flowbox, you don't need tracking to do that. So even oh, if I have nice. the, I have the shape, let me let me just do one here, uh, separate shape. Uh, I usually I really got used to drawing with the Flowbox, so I do shapes like that usually. Let's say um, this is my new shape here, mm -hmm. and if you have new shape. Uh, if you animate this shape, let's move it around, like here and there. I will move it there, just to, just some example, right? So this mm -hmm. is my, my animation, right? Uh, if we want to focus on this shape, because it's traveling a lot, you can just select this shape, as you see here, it's stabilized. Oh, no that, is, that is nice. That is super yeah. nice. I, I can stabilize it also in this view. Just let me do that. So now it's stabilized in both windows, you see? Oh, nice. So, because yes. because traditionally what but what is the what is the approach is the is that we need to to export a tracker from a spline that is already animated and and use that tracker to to start to start drawing other splines so what you're saying is that you draw a spline and you animate that spline and then instantly without having to to do parent child trackers extracting information you can straight away start drawing another one really close to this one and it's stabilized by default Yes, that's correct. Of course, really nice. you open spline, close spline. I mean, whatever you like. I mean, actually, we're just following the shape. If you like, we can also follow the points. So, if you like, for example, focus only on these two points here. You can select them. Uh, you can uh, stabilize points here and just press play. And now we're stabilizing only these two points. You can focus on them, right? Oh, sweet. Zoom is independent, right? So this is important if we if we have to just you know focus on what we're doing. Also, what is cool is uh, is just to, you know, so we can focus and also save performance is isolation mode, uh, which is also new. Let me show you that. You just press uh, Alt Q and you got this blue border here. And now as you see, I'm isolate, isolating only one shape. Oh man, that's nice. And also I'm rendering only one shape. This is important because, uh, you know, we have like hundreds of shapes, right? So why should we render all, all of them? Why should we, you know, bothering with all of them? So now we can focus on one. Absolutely. And you can just jump back to, to all your shapes. Just I'll queue, queue, I'll queue like that. Much to uh, much to the to the style of, of any any CG package. Like you are you, you are isolating a part of like the of of, yes. of of that scene. So this is it's really intelligent and and, and it helps with the with the with the performance as well. So you don't you don't need yes. to have all of that heavy heavy amount of splines in there. Just 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 creating a mess and slowing down the the, the script. Exactly, exactly. That, that's the point, actually, to, so, you, so you can really like, uh, kind of manage it quickly. And, and not, another thing is that, uh, let's say, let's go for shape creation, this drawing and snapping to show you how, uh, how kind of efficient it is. So let's say I'm going to go with some uh, detail here. I want to cover some detail. Uh, let's maybe go here, right, and the arm. So if I, if I go here and just uh, start with new shape and use drawing, if I draw a line here uh, representing my detail, let's say step by step, I can do it in steps. So you see, this is the shape. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. And you see the quality of the shape and number of points. Um, I mean, I, you can, if you do it manually, you probably would would put the same number of points here. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's it's, so it's it's actually it's actually doing it doing it correctly and 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 giving you giving you enough points for the for the for the resolution you have in there. So it's not creating too many or too little. So it gives you it gives you a nice a nice control over that. And you quite you you, you just save a, you just save a few a few seconds just with this. Yes, I think so. I mean, if you can of course now go for density, just press D on a keyboard and just you know uh, rem, you know bring more or less. You can just drag the slider Start to play with it. Resolution, yeah. We analyze the, st the stroke on the on the ply, and of course you can continue manually because sometimes you don't need to draw. This is simple, uh, let's say edge, so we can put one, uh, two, maybe three sh two points manually if you like. So you mm -hmm. don't need to go like. If you want to close it quickly, of course you can do you can do something like that. This is of course really bad shape. I, I made it here, but uh, but it just shows the shows the case. Uh, and and of course if we if you want to combine these methods like drawing and, and clicking you can do it no problem with that yeah so so i think this is this is very useful so with this with this with this drawing with this drawing thing so so one of the things that 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 captured my attention was that you can actually uh, draw to 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 move the spline to adapt the spline to a new keyframe 
that was yep. that was actually very interesting. I felt that like wow, this is this is interesting for for organic organic shapes like moving cloth yeah. or whatever is that, that is that is like flags and stuff. Um, I yeah. felt it really interesting. So it literally saves you a lot of time. Can you show? Can you yeah. show us that? Yeah, absolutely. Let me show you that with the example of with let's say uh, organic movement because this is important because. Uh, you know, some some artists, some some users are are asking, okay, but this is not always working with uh, with exact, you know, shape. Like for example, here we have, if I have, uh, let's say, exact number of points, some corners, and you know, valleys and hills here to to cover. Um, so when we when we do snapping, sometimes these these points are kind of um, changing position, right? Mm -hmm. Because for the algorithm understands where you want it, this corner to be. It's not always exactly. Especially depends on how we draw the next uh, next uh, stroke. Mm -hmm. But if you got organic movement, like you know, waving flag, you know, hair on the wind, you know, water element, or or any cloth on the wind, like you said before, that's excellent tool. Because let me show you. If you can go here, I just I just entered the, the folder with the face. This is folder with the shape mm -hmm. shapes. And as you can see here, uh, this is green, which means I got tracking in a folder, which is cool because I can structure my tracks by by folders. So I'm tracking the entire, uh, you know, uh, you know, group of shapes here, and I can draw new shapes uh, inside this folder, uh, so it will follow the same tracking. Uh, so I can go for the new shape, and instead of point and click, I will draw the shape. So if I if I draw a line like this, this is a you know hypothetical you know hair here. Mm -hmm. uh, let's let's do maybe one more. Uh, so something like that. Another good example how how you can cover very quickly. A lot of elements, like you know, hair elements, right? Mm -hmm. If you have have to do that, I usually you know do like uh, 20 strokes like that very quickly, 30, 50. I can very quickly cover this uh, here. Let me just make it darker so you can see it better. And uh, so this is my uh, sorry. This is you have to finish the open spline by pressing enter. So this is the the open spline. Now this open spline should uh, follow the tracking, which is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, the full tracking, and now if we go for let's disable snapping, uh, sorry stabilization. So now if you want to animate it, you can just uh, let's say this uh, this spline. Strain of hair, yeah. Yeah, strain of hair. Just press uh, brush again and just draw a new uh, line right for this, and it will just uh, snap. So you can now quickly animate. Oh, nice, nice. W again, and now it goes here. You know, I'm, my mouse is a little bit shaky here, so I can get some, you know. Uh, jittering here, but uh, you would have but, you would have saved me days of work if I if I if I had something something like this a few years ago. Uh, yeah. it's it's really interesting. Well, first first the open splines is is kind of something new. There's 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 not aware. Um, I don't know seven years ago. So the, these open splines definitely definitely uh, help. But the fact that you are drawing and not just changing point point by point. That is kind of that is kind of a big deal for 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 a, for a roto artist that is doing a heavy a heavy roto and with with a, with a truckload of detail. So you can simply select that that spline and redraw it. So it will will it will it keep the the ratio and 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 the distance between the points roughly? Yeah, let me show. You. I mean, because uh, there there's a, there's a, usually it's the question oh, yeah, about yeah. you know how for example add the detail right. So and this is about number of points on the spline. So as you see, we try to keep the, the proportions and distances between points. So for example, if I yeah, add, that's nice. okay, maybe I need more, more detail right now, so I can just go and uh, add a couple of points, maybe here, like this, number of points, and just press brush again uh, with the key shortcut and just draw a line now with maybe more detail, right, like this, you see? So I'm now using these new points to cover new detail but everything is before it's all good, right? You see, these points oh, are following. Nice. That's nice. And as you, see, as you see, these points are here with the proper proportions. So you don't get messy, you know, with the, with, with positions of these points. This is, I think, very important. So if you have, uh, there was a good example from, I think, Dinek. Uh, they, they mentioned the shot with 3,000 frames and the uh, waving flag on the wind. Uh, and they had to roto out manually these flags. There was like a couple of them. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, so, I, re I remember a few. <laughs> ah, you remember? Okay. I remember so, a few. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think that was the case, uh, which which could be saved by by this type of tool. Okay, but again, I mean, I'm trying to just explain that snapping and drawing uh, is uh, pro maybe not uh, you know the final ultimate you know one button solution. So you draw everything and forget about absolutely. it. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. 
work with points, we still work with, uh, you know, position uh, and all that. But I think we try to save the time on every aspect here, right? So this is uh, this is for for it. Um, okay, I think that another very important question, mm -hmm. which usually comes around Flowbox, if uh, to, to me and to our team, is about how we handle. Uh, let's say uh, two methods of let's see how we create roto because there are two schools we have Bezier's and B splines. Oh, and you want to address the elephant in the room? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah, that, that, yeah. that was that was my first question to you. Uh, it's yeah. like like where where where's where's B splines? Where's where's B splines? <laughs> Exactly. So let's, let's just make it 100% clear. We are developing base plans for Flowbox and the base plans are coming very soon. So, so just don't be worried about it. I mean, we really know what is the difference between working with base plans and Bezier's. The thing is that, and just it has to be said, that we are learning, uh, let's say, and we also not only copying the solutions that are currently on the market, we're really trying to to push this a bit to the limit, we try to figure out, you know, what is the reason why you're using B-splines. Mm -hmm. It's not because, uh, let's say, because let's say the B-splines, uh, mathematics behind the B-splines is, is pretty clear. Of course, it gives you the, the, the soft line. It gives you the ability to quickly modify the soft shape, um, smooth shape, that which is the most important. Yeah. Very, uh, very organic and natural and natural movement and flow on, on that, right? Exactly, exactly. But of course, it has some some limitations as well. Absolutely. Right? Like, that's why we also investigate it. And that's why we don't rush just implementing, okay, just give it this line and forget it. You know, everybody's gonna be happy. We, <laughs> we want to be a bit more happy maybe in the future, because we, we try to bring, bring some flexibility here, right? Uh, one, of, so, one of the things with the with the with the B splines and uh, is that you need to do a lot more points. So it, it gives you a lot more control, and that's why you have in some in some of the other softwares you have the X spline option that is that is kind of B spline but with the tension, so you can change the weight uh, in that moment. So there is there is for me there is there is no doubt that I I just use B splines, but I do understand, and I when I'm when I'm when I'm when I'm teaching Roto, I, I explain the differences and say careful guys because with B splines you need to put more points uh so you need to be you need, you need to be careful with that but but yeah it's it's interesting that you guys are, are actually trying a um a, a different approach trying to trying to break break this this uh this thing that is with the with the splines because there is there is definitely ground to break in that area yeah i think so i think this is you know it, it also is important that we because we want to bring this um you know many aspects of automatization in the future. We want it to be kind of in sync with that. You know, the, the Bezier's, B splines, all these, let's say, um, I would say uh, for many years, it's, it was present on market. We, we use that. There's, there are X splines as well, very, very flexible with tension, right? We can use them. So we're now kind of learning, right? Trying to, we're pushing the Bezier's, pushing the B splines uh, and kind of, you know, analyzing this, how we can, we can come up with something Again, a bit faster, a bit better, a bit easier to use. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so yeah, we just let us uh, play it with it with it a bit more. Uh, let us do that and oh. just be patient, and you can you will get it. Absolutely, uh, Miko. Uh, there is the, there's a question here on our on our uh, um, Facebook Live. Uh, mm -hmm. Hi guys. Oh, Yvonne is mind blown about this. Oh, that's nice. So, um, Vadim Davidov is asking: Is CPU based or GPU based? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, you know, the rotoscopy, roto, let's say, roto tool you see here is now uh, powered by GPU. This is important, so we are rendering on GPU mm -hmm. uh, the image. Uh, plenty of tools in Flowbox are still on CPU. Uh, this is because we try to use the, the best from, from bots, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the idea behind in Flowbox is that we want to bring, uh, let's say, bot representations for most of the tools in Flowbox. So you shouldn't be uh, kind of uh, locked with only one solution. Uh, we think because this this is node based system, we we are building usually huge graphs, uh, especially when we go into into compositing. Mm -hmm. uh, this is gonna uh, this is gonna be really like intense area uh, node editor, and we process uh, all these nodes. We uh, this is our next step. Let's say when we uh, implement this CPU GPU kind of intelligent uh, um, let's say analysis analysis inside a node graph, right? Mm -hmm. Which node should be rendered on what uh, to get the, the, the best kind of output, right? Uh, so there, there's a plenty of cool ideas around it, 
but uh, currently 100% let's say rotor GPU um, we we use of course CPU for other other nodes like uh, grading like uh, keying like merging this is on CPU right now cool all right all right let's carry on let's carry on showing showing some more stuff cool okay so let, let me just uh, quickly show the what is different uh, here I showed you the drawing and snapping I think this is uh, this was the the, the very, very new stuff stabilizing mm -hmm. and isolation uh, is also very cool here uh, what is what is next is interpolation I think this is important oh that's a nice one that was that was one of our first discussions was regarding yeah. was regarding uh, in, in interpolation because it's one of the things that 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 annoys me um, is that that, that, that usually companies are not too careful about about how they how they approach um, how they approach this. So it's it's, mm -hmm. it's 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 really important for me when I'm when I'm animating a spline that I yeah. have I have full control uh, of where the spline is going and especially what is being in between those two keyframes uh, without having to to do a keyframe every frame. Uh, that yeah. is that is absolutely ridiculous. So what that, that, that was the first question that that I that, that I asked you guys. It was like, can you can you can you have a smooth interpolation? Uh, and I think you came up with with if, something even more crazy about that. So it's not just smooth interpolation, but you can do whatever you want. Yeah, this is <coughs> this is important because uh, because this is uh, I can show you here. We got we got this dope sheet where you can uh, of course manage points and all animation, right? You can move the points around. Uh, uh, all keys here. Uh, what is cool here, you can really like, it's really flexible, so you can move the points like this, you can slide them, there is no limitation, so you can just uh, do it like that. You can of course copy and paste and uh, or stretch and animation if you like, but this is important that uh, first we implemented the smooth interpolation, which is the same like uh, in Nuke. Uh, this is important because when we deal with the organic movements, like people walking, you know, moving around, mostly, uh, we want it to be smooth, right? We don't want to linear interpolation, but uh, no, if you no, want to go, well, yeah, it's difficult difficult to find linear linear movements in 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 real life. To be honest, unless you have like a car moving at at, at a constant speed, that is that is a linear movement, but it needs to be a constant speed. Everything else that that we see in life, like a, a person walking, that is that is that, that 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 has like a curve attached to it. So we are always accelerating and decelerating, right? Yeah, exactly. So, okay, let me maybe just select this shape which was moving uh, a bit faster here. So let's that that was the animation here, and yeah, so that's that's the smooth smooth animation as you can see. Uh, let me just zoom it a bit. This shape is moving, you know, three keyframes, smooth interpolation between them. Uh, you see the arc of movements, right? So if I want to make it linear, I can do it here. I can just select the sh the, the point, press Shift S, which is opposite of smoothness, and this now is linear as you see. It now jumps as linear movement. Uh, I just got different color for for this key, so I can inspect that. And what also what is important is I can modify it also in a curve editor. Uh, today it's it's under development. We this we we gonna we're prepping uh, this curve editor uh, a bit more with some you know pictures around and some some stuff. Mm -hmm. But what is important that you will be able to 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 modify this here, Change right? That. You can make tangents if you like for for motion. And if you get this, if you do that, if you do that. You will create a third state for the for the keyframe. It's gonna be custom interpolation, mm -hmm. uh, and you can you can do that multiple points, multiple curves if you like. Uh, you know, the, you know, there's the the um, people on 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 our Facebook. Like, by, by the way, we have 27 people watching it live, and there's already there's already um, some people asking. So, what is the difference uh, from 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 silhouette or nuke from 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 what we're seeing? So, well, well, from from my from my point of view. Uh, well, silhouette, silhouette doesn't have this yet. Uh, curve, curve editor and and smooth interpolation. You can do it linear. You can do it is in and is out. Uh, and and from Nuke, well, Nuke is a compositing software. It has a thousand different things to do, and it's and it's and it's slower in this. And it's not it's not meant to do roto. So we're talking about a specific tool that is meant to do roto. Everything, all the shortcuts are 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 just for roto artists. So it's a it's, it's a it's a specialist tool that we are seeing here. Of course, we see a lot of stuff that that we are familiar in in, in other packages, uh, but that is a good thing as long as we as long as we keep the performance on the top. Um, this is a, a specific software uh, for Roto, but yep. yeah, you can you can probably like, answer this better better than me. 
No, that, that's, a, that's a very good explanation because uh, we are, we're focusing now on the rotoscopy tool set. This is important. We try to, you know, uh, for, I would say that the one big difference is price if you compare it with Nuke, uh, yeah. um, <laughs> which I think is very important because uh, you, you don't go for you don't go for a couple thousand dollars because you don't want to do maybe entire entire compositing work right now. Maybe you, you want to focus on, on this process on Roto. So uh, you, sh you actually go for, for a solution which is affordable and kind of uh, flexible in this exactly, you know, uh, tools. How much, how, how much are we talking about? Uh, we're talking about 46 bucks per, per, per month, which is node locked yep. license. Uh, of course, if you go for annual, it's, it's going to be uh, way cheaper. And we, got, we, we, we have a plan to, you know, you know, discounts coming, you know, here and there for, because this is this is new tool and we know that people have to kind of, you know, uh, learn, see, test. So uh, there's there's one complaint about uh, the Flowbox today, which, is, which we get a lot about um, because the, the Flowbox is now uh, kind of protected with, let's say, uh, credit card. So if you want to get the, the the trial, usually you have to put the credit card details, which nobody, uh, not everyone likes to do that. Do which mm -hmm. I, we fully understand. And so don't worry, it is come, it is it is gonna change uh, in the future. Uh, we we just uh, designing this, let's say, new new trial options for you so you can test software fully. Uh, and there is a, there is a lot of coming here, so don't worry about it. Um, we are, we're just new on the market. We learn it a lot. So. <laughs> cool. <laughs> to you so yeah no every 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 of your voice every every let's say uh, opinion is really valid we usually answer very quickly so if you have questions just if, any complaints you can tell us no <laughs> all right more stuff show me more stuff yeah cool. this is quite this so, is quite interesting yeah that was, that was interpolation I think this is this is important you know this is crazy about animation because my background is animation you know I finished you know I graduated graduated as an animation director so I, you know, the graph editor for me was very important. Uh, let me just show you one, you know, just a glimpse of it. Uh, oh, I just, I just love that. That wasn't cool. Uh, let me just uh, open it up back. All right, so I can hit five, yeah. So this is graph editor and um, mm, curve editor. And let just me show you, let me show you this, which is a blur tool. I just use this note for, for as an example. Uh, and let's animate it. Okay, that's my that's my animation. Uh, so if I hope you can see it well, because this is uh, can you see that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Well, so this is you know this is the how we deal with uh, with shapes. Of course, this is important. So you, as an animator, you should you should be able to do uh, all this. You know, playing with the uh, with the shapes uh, with the with the curve, right? Nicely. But what what is cool? You can you can just move these points like that. You can slip them, which is not possible in an, on another package. And also you can uh, what is cool? You can shape them uh, like this is a bit more like. Um, Fusion has this feature, if I remember, uh, but it's also implemented here. And what's, what is very cool, you can also mo uh, modify multiple tangents at the same time. Oh, like nice. This, <laughs> this, you see. And cool. this is crazy, but you know, for animators, it's pretty important to, to be able to control this, you know, this way. So you can smooth out more, make it more, you know, linear or smooth uh, simultaneously on multiple points. Very important for animation. Cool. Yeah. So this is this is this is cool stuff. But this is this area is, is uh, let's say under under continuous develop. Mm -hmm. so it's, it's coming. It's gonna be really powerful in the future, like animation layers, all that. But going back to Roto, because, yeah. uh, because show, me, show me a bit about the tools that 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 that, that you have, like uh, corner pane, ripple edit, uh, the stuff that that usually people want to see. Is it like okay, how can I do how can I do this faster? Like how what 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 did you change? A lot of people are asking. So what is what is the difference? What what is the difference between the other packages? So we've seen performance. So Nuke is probably someone was saying that that if you try to do something like this in Nuke, it would be uh, ten times slower, or you spend ten times more time. So you're already talking about speed in terms of the package because it's a dedicated package. But what did you what did you implement different? Uh, did a different solution from 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 other packages on the market? Uh, well, I mean, you, you're talking about uh, kind of uh, the, the features around kind of how we deal with uh, with uh, let's say. Um, I know you have a smart ripple edit and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Let, let me show you that. Uh, yeah, this is this is very cool because uh, okay, let's go here. Let's let's just uh, example with the shape. Maybe here, I'll just draw a new shape. 
Um, how does your nodes work? Because I, I haven't seen I haven't seen you uh, showing us how to how to how your how how your nodes work. Uh, ah, so, you so mean what, in node editor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Thanks for asking for that because I actually forgot to show it at the beginning. This is important because uh, in nodes here are uh, singular, uh, circular, of course, and that's that's the flame guys. They love it because they, they got the same, right? But <laughs> but um, uh, this is important because we try to avoid this dragging these arrows. Uh, you know the problem with dragging these elements here, like mm -hmm. pl plugging and, and unplugging which is not super cool. So we in invented this stroking, so you can draw a stroke to connect tools. So you can just bring a tool, and if you want to connect it, just draw a line. It's connected for you. You can disconnect it like that. You can connect it also like this, right, uh, nice. on the fly. And this is the fastest way of uh, connecting us, I, I can imagine, right? I mean, of course, uh, uh, this this depends on number of inputs uh, you need to deal with, but the default uh, connection is made automatically for you. Of course, there are some. There are elbows, so you can also uh, bring this to organize your flow. This is here as well. All right, so let me just kill uh, here. Let me just show you the, um, the the ripple edit because I think yeah. this is important. Miko, there's already uh, uh, Matt is is already throwing a, a discount code uh, on our on our Facebook chat. It's uh, Project Road to Comp. So if Matt wants to wants to talk a bit about that, <laughs> let us know. Let us know what you're doing. <laughs> Matt is, Matt, is, Matt is smiling here. <laughs> this is, you know, his fox smile. You know, that's. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Talk, talk, talk to us about this. <laughs> Matt, come over, come over, tell it, would you? I wasn't, I wasn't expecting to be online, but. <laughs> Hi, Matt. Hey, Carlos, how you How's doing? How's it going? What do, do? what do you do? Corner. What do you do here in Flowbox? Uh, I work, uh, I work mostly in sales and customer support and uh, and marketing. So not much, not much to do. Just you know, <laughs> nothing. Uh, cool. All right. Yeah, so, so tell us about tell us about this uh, this uh, discount code. Well, um, you know, we pushed in our, our newsletter that we uh, were going to give a discount to the people that uh, jumped on this uh, on this podcast to, to thank them for sh for sharing their time with us. So it's a uh, it's a discount code for a couple of months uh, that's active through the weekend. So. Anybody that's watching right now and wants to jump on to the shop, shop.flowbox.io, uh, it's active and you can uh, you can jump in the software today at a discount. So Cool. Thank you very much, man. Yeah. Thanks for the airtime. <laughs> that's really cool. <laughs> All right. See you later, Carlos. See you. Cool. Dude. Okay. I see, I see, you know, Chris Hiller. Hello, Chris. Uh, it's great to see you. Uh, you know, I got a like, bunch of questions from him here. I see them. Uh, yeah. A, a massive de deployment and instances, thousand instances simultaneously. Have you run it in a Docker? I'm not sure if I understand all of them. Uh, you know, just to just to tell about the probably, to tell probably the Docker is like, is about uh, virtual machines. Are talking about virtual machines? Have you run it in Docker? So I think Docker is like a, a virtual machine deployer. And have you run thousand instances simultaneous, sim simultaneously? A thousand instances of 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 the of the software? Is that what we're, what we're talking about, or a thousand instances of like splines and stuff? Yeah. Okay. I think I think uh, th there was a question about the. I think the um, what is behind because there was there was like one question about the Lu uh, Luna language, which was at the very beginning of of the flowbox. Uh -huh. Let me show you what is the. What is the let's say the power behind the um, let's say this arch inside this architecture? Okay, uh, how flexible it is. Yeah. So I will go to uh, all right. Let me just go here to the settings. I will just uh, enable the debug mode. Mm -hmm. uh, I go to debug mode, and okay, let me let me show it to to here. Uh, this is okay. These are our tools. So we got we hit tab key like in Nuke. You can bring tools like Blur, for example, right? You can bring a key for here, very simple one, but uh, pretty effective. And, and you can, of course, type Roto, which is like our selection of tools. But you can also bring uh, not only tools, uh, but also values. Like, for example, 5, you can hit 5, enter, and you see you get the node 5. And hit tab again, bring 7, for example. You got two of them. And now you can hit tab and press uh, plus, yeah, which is operator. Uh, and now you get another node. As you see, you can connect these two now and check the output. That's the output. 
which is 12. As you see, we got visual programming in front of our face. So, so you can now build your expressions here out of nodes. And oh, that's nice. That's interesting. Yeah, you can plug it into Blair as a kernel, no problem. And then Blair is now analyzed by, by this uh, you know, equation here. And this is just, uh, just a glimpse, just a brief you know, teaser of what is coming because if we talk about, for, uh, for example, tracking data, right, when we need to multiply tracking data, average tracking data, you know, do a lot of mathematical, you know, op um, operations. Uh, why do we have to type it in Python where if we can go for a couple nodes, build your own tools, uh, store them and have them handy? Uh, oh, if you need thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I, I'm not a programmer, I'm not a developer. Yeah, that, that's why it, it, I think I was so happy at the beginning seeing this architecture and all, all kind of powerful uh, approach with this visual uh, programming. Okay, so that's, that's, uh, that's about what's behind. Uh, and to, ah, Chris is talking about rendering. Uh, you know, this is, you know, the, uh, you know rendering in a, in, a, in a farm, I think this is, uh, this is what's coming. We, we don't have yet, you know, the manager for, for rendering on the farm. Uh, definitely what is cool about Flowbox because it's built as a client and server. Um, so we have two kind of uh, versions of Flowbox. So one is server, one is client. Mm -hmm. So you can run uh, as many clients as you like, which are actually render nodes, right? Uh, so you can use uh, go for cloud computing. And uh, let's say unlimited number of these clients can be can be uh, started on uh, in the cloud. And you can manage one server at the facility and work this way. So let's just go back to the uh, to the regular environment because it will probably crash. <laughs> I can I can uh, you know, expect that. But it's here. Uh, so so this is about the the nodes and the environment. And um, I wanted to show you Ripple Edit. Let's cool. show you that. Yeah, show me that. Think, well, let's go maybe to this green area here and make it even darker because I think the most important is the shape. Okay, this this shape is pretty messy because it's bezier, of course, and uh, not the beast plane. Uh, and uh, <laughs> now let me show you how it works. Okay, so this is the animation. I'm gonna do animation by hand. Uh, I rotate the shape, move around, move it here, move around, like that. Yeah. So we got this uh, manual animation. What is your What is your approach to the to, to the rotation? Um, so uh, how do you how do you deploy the that that uh, that anchor? Uh, how I do that? I mean, uh, this is about quick actions in Flowbox. I think this is also important because if you compare with Silhouette or Nuke, uh, to do like quick actions like movement uh, or rotate, uh, you should be able to do it as fast as possible because this is the most common operation on the shape you do. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you do it by uh, control and right mouse, uh, right mouse button click uh, and drag. We use the right mouse button a lot. You know, this is a kind of forgotten, you know, uh, element of, uh, of our e equipment hardware, right? Because the, we use right mouse button mostly for contextual menu for, for some op functions, but uh, it's actually a very, you know, useful uh, button in the mouse. So yeah. you can drag with this button. Yeah, so we use that. Well, I'll, prob I'll probably, I'll probably uh, address that one because usually, well, for, for, for some of the people, you're going to be using, you'll be, you'll be using the Wacom. So, yeah. so probably, like depending on the configurations on your Wacom, uh, mm -hmm. that that would that would cause some issues. But but mm -hmm. but it's, it's 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 interesting. It's interesting. What what do you do with the, with that right mouse button? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we we probably have to cover you know the uh, entire different let's say layout for Wacom users for for graphic tablet users mm -hmm. because th then we will give them the ability to you know just uh, adjust it for for the needs. That. Yeah, customize yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, personalize that exactly. But what is important for for let's say mouse user, it's it's a very quick action for for the, for the pen. When I was working with the Wacom, it was also pretty quick, so you can just press another button on the pen and just yeah. you know start start operating. So so yeah, the movement is which is important. You don't need to select the points or line. You can just move around like that. Uh, Control Alt give you the rotation, and the pivot shows axis of rotation shows up under your mouse right away, which is uh, maybe it's nothing new, but it's working really like quick. Uh, it applies, of course, to the points. You can do the same with the points. Uh, same with the scale. Uh, so you press Alt key and just scaling this out or entire shape the same, right? Uh, you can scale scale the, like that. If you go for if you go for more, let's say, sophisticated manipulation like uh, shape box, you can bring it up. Uh, and this is important because you got the uh, the ability to bend this shape uh, nicely, uh, which nice is corner pin. Yeah, it's corner pin. Yes, and also you can rotate it uh, and 
your gizmo is still visible, so you can focus on what you're doing. This is important so you don't lose the focus, you don't lose the gizmo uh, during rotation. Which usually in other apps it's res resetting constantly. Yeah, yeah. The actual the actual corner pin resets resets its it, its size, and yeah. you, lo you lose track on the on the corner pin. So that is exactly. that is that is that is really nice. Yeah, I didn't like it, you know, in other software, so that's that's why we developed it this way. So we try to keep it uh, all the time, you know, uh, handy here. And also, mm, uh, what is important, if you, if for example, now s go for animation, yes, it will reset. You see, now it's resetting because mm -hmm. I changed my frame. Yeah. But during one action, is of course always on, ready for me. And um, okay, so we did some uh, some animation. Let's just check this animation now. So we have this here. Maybe let's okay, something like that. And now let's go for ripple edit. Okay, so I can during ripple edit I can uh, mo modify points. For example, I can uh, let's enable ripple edit. I did it uh, like in any other let's say uh, apps like Silhouette, uh, Mocha, or Nuke. Uh, same algorithm is working right now. So if I move the points to the right like this, uh, I can now check my animation. Uh, let's see. So you see how it how it goes. Not exactly as I wish because it's like bending, you know, collapsing here. It's not not what I wanted because you know, the shape is rotating, but this movement, this point, is only, uh, you know, calculated with it. It's absolutely not relative, right? Yeah, it's not not going, you know, along with the rotation of the shape, because the shape is rotating pretty nicely here. Uh, so we developed different algorithm for that, and let's just undo, oh, we have a crash. Excellent. <laughs> uh, that's perfect. Okay, that's let's, just, let's just uh, see, you know, how it works with the, with the, with the saving, right? Let's close the program, I will right. run again. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 kind of you know inevitable during the show. Okay, you see this project here. So if you click under us on save project, can you see that? Yeah, yeah. Cool. If you click it, we are now uh, exactly in the place where we finished. So this is the place. Oh, I'm nice. So all the actions were recorded. So it's not like whatever preference is there for like the last five minutes or the last minute no. or whatever. No, no, no. It's like it's the, last the last click that you actually did. So you can, you, can, you can recover everything pretty much that you've done. Yes, exactly. That's wow. exactly what I did. That's no nice. problem with, the, with that. Okay, so this is, let's me, let me kill this point and let's, let's check the animation because that's my, again my animation. And now let's do different ripple edit yes i will i will just to show you the, the power of it i will add another point i will switch to ripple edit intelligent one the smart one i will add new point because i can do that during ripple edit as well and let's move this here right so we can see uh, this point in relation to others now we, if we check the motion please look at how it behaves you see how nicely it rotates together with the shape oh nice so it's it's no longer absolute like point a to point b it actually it's relative to the to the shape yes. To, to the, yeah, to, yeah, that's nice. Uh, yeah, so so imagine imagine you have to let's say uh, correct let's say 100 keyframes uh, and uh, with ripple edit and then uh, these shapes these po these points are rotating plenty right during the the all animation. Uh, yeah. There is no transform. There is no tracking. This is your hand by hand. Uh, I mean, I mean hand. Um, hand done rotor. Animation. Yeah. Exactly. It's usually one of the problems is is adding adding detail to splines exactly because of this. So if you want to add like something new, like a new detail mm -hmm. in there, usually when you add another point, uh, it just screws everything up. Like you need to go yes. back and review all the keyframes that you've done before. Um, mm -hmm. So this is quite interesting because because you have you have a lot more control and it doesn't screw up your spline. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Let me, let me show you. I mean, you can. I'm adding detail right now. Yeah, so I'm adding more detail and more. You see. Like you know, this reshaping this pretty, pretty, pretty intensively, and you see now how it looks. That's nice. Without tracking, without transforming. So you, so you can literally, you can literally. What you're telling me is that you can literally start with um, with a nice, smooth spline, just just kind of the basic structure of your roto, uh, without without having I don't know. Imagine like. A, piece of cloth or, or, or I don't know, some really nice details, some dents on, 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 on this object. So you can start with a nice straight line and, and work with the, with, the, with the global animation, the general animation of, of, of this spline. And then by the time you finish the normal movement, you can go there and add these tiny little details without screwing up all the rotor. Exactly. I think this is very powerful because normally we have to plan ahead with exactly. all the details, you exactly. have to think carefully, and usually we we face up some mistakes and problems on the way, right? The issues. Yep. So yes, yeah, so you can go with a very simple shape at the beginning, like this, for example, and now you can go for okay. Now I need maybe to add some 
tiny detail, maybe some, I don't know, ear element here, I don't know, the nose, uh, something there. And uh, no, it's not actually about the f features on, on the face usually, but yes, you can go, ah, sorry, actually I have to do it with the, with the ripple edit With the ripple on. edit on, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Let's do that. All uh, right. So this is now you can start crafting this, right? And whatever you craft here is going to nicely, you know, follow your animation. Oh, nice. That's fresh. Yeah. That's fresh. Yeah, definitely. And other questions? Let's see. How's, how, the, how is Luna coming along? An idea when there will be a public release? Yeah, I mean, the Luna Luna is, let's say, inside Flowbox and it's uh, powering Flowbox inside. What is important is that we... Uh, we really focus today to deliver very good tool to work on. The Luna, power of Luna comes with this, you know, node system that you can uh, bring your own, build your custom e expressions here in Flowbox very, very shortly. You can modify, you know, these, um, these tools and, and values and properties uh, using the, the Luna, let's say, uh, tools inside. Uh, I think this is the, 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 power, the power of Luna that's coming. But without, let's say, the interface, the proper, you know, the um, kind of shape manipulation, uh, good tracking, and uh, and and other, let's say, tools around rotoscopy, it's uh, it's let's say it's not going to be really useful because having, let's say, sandbox uh, where you can build uh, thousands of tools uh, and uh, and uh, let's say um, in a visual way, it's it's not going to so solve the problem of let's say our compositing work today. Absolutely. Okay. Cool, man. Yeah, have we have you any other questions? Maybe more questions. Yeah, more we're questions. we're 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 hoping to see to see what people what people are 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 thinking about this. Like Chris was saying that the crash makes it a true demo. That's it. Like yeah. Who, that's who doesn't who doesn't crash? Like this is yeah, it's normal, right? It's normal. <laughs> Crashing. The, the the nice thing is you can actually recover the the project from the from the last moment where you, where you've where you've clicked. So it's actually yeah. quite good. <laughs> I was not expecting yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, let, let me show you let me show one more thing here because this is new, this is coming. I mean, the, you know, this is settings. Uh, we're, we're expanding settings, uh, you know, developing them step by step. I think this is important for beast points and bezels together when we manipulate. So this is uh, this how we represent the shape. But uh, usually when we work with the shape, we don't like to, to see tangents or points or even sometimes line is not even needed. We want to see maybe only points. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some ideas. So this is the settings panel, the new panel we, build, we are building right now. And we have different states. This is unselected shape. This is selected shape. This is uh, selected points and so dragging action. So we have, let's say, four states for what we're doing. And for example, I can go for, because this is my selected shape, so I can change the size of the points if I like. Uh, I can make them, let me show you some crazy settings here. I can go like that. I can make them transparent if I like, like this. So I can see my line through them, as you see. I can nicely nice. drag them around, you see. Uh, and there, they have different states when I leave them. So this is selected point. And again, selected point also can be differently changed, if I like, also with the color. I can disable uh, tangents at all, so if I don't want to see them. And also what is important during drag, uh, if I if I drag this, you see, I see the point, so I can uh, disable point during drag, one click, and now if I drag, I don't see the point. Oh, because nice, nice, hey, nice. That is, that is nice. I don't need to see the point, right? I don't need to see the, the, the line. Absolutely. You want to see, you want to see the line, you want to see that, how, yeah. how good that, 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 that edge is being followed. Yeah, exactly. So this is, this is this action. So you can actually craft it as you like. This, this is, these settings are now for vertexes. And uh, this is coming for the line and tangents uh, independently, uh, and of course the cage uh, for the beast point. So, so you will be able to actually customize it really for exactly for your needs, uh, cool. as you like. That's yeah. really nice. Um, yeah. What about what about? Um, do you have anything in mind for for helping people? Because I know this is this is the classic this is the classic discussion um, about how to do roto motion blur, follow motion blur, hard edge, soft edge. Uh, do you guys have any any tool in mind to help people to 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 kind of watch those edges closer and have have like for instance a, a hard edge mode so you can so you can see and, and and be careful and be sure that you are following that that hard edge. Yeah, this is this is important. I mean, yes, we are developing the the preview for for the for the alpha channel. Uh, so you can see. Let's okay, okay. Let's see this uh, here maybe because this is our shape. Uh, let's check the. Uh, let's switch here. To see the alpha channel. Let's enable the, the motion blur here for this shape. Uh, okay. So let me just quickly go here. 
Um, let's check the motion blur settings. Okay, maybe just crank up the shutter. Uh, this is the one. Oh, I, think we got, oh, I think I messed up a bit with the with my settings. So let me just reset. Uh, reset the settings. Yeah. Is this view that we're watching uh, the foreground? No, this is this is the actual render render viewing, right? Yeah, now now yes, now we are previewing the the render. Okay. So let's just let's just go here. Okay, let me just quickly because we actually did. Yeah, this is the alpha channel. Yeah, so we see the motion blur, right? Cool. So this is this motion blur we have here is uh, is, uh, is is matching the specs from matching the specs from Nuke. Uh, so you should be able to get this uh, exactly the same uh, in Nuke and Flowbox. I think this is important. So because you can export. You can export the splines. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll show you that in, in a second. Uh, so, so first, let's focus on the, on, the, on motion blur aspect. So, we are developing now the preview for, for let's say non, uh, let's say hard edge here. So you can see the hard edge of the shape without seeing the motion blur. We are developing it right now, uh, because uh, during the fast movement, you want to focus on what is your shape exactly covering, uh, and you want to see the hard edge here, like black and white, um, and so this is important. Uh, and also, what is important here, you can of course crank up the quality, uh, so bring the quality up and sh animate shutter, animate motion blur. This is all animatable, so yeah. you can you can check yeah. the settings on the fly. And what is what is I think the very powerful thing is that we have now compatibility with Nuke and After Effects. So actually, you can just shoot out the shapes to, into Nuke, uh, just hitting export to Nuke uh, with baking frames or without baking frames. Uh, and this is cool because because without baking frames, you are exporting exporting only important keyframes, right? Your oh, animation the keyframes there are there are there are there, yeah. Yeah, so you have four keyframes. You you can expect exactly the same keyframes in Nuke. So your file size will be re pretty small, right? You, you will get small file size because this is a problem when you have a lot of keyframes, a lot of shapes. And you transfer that to, into Nuke, right? Uh, and also, what is what is cool if if there is a tracking happening, like here in this folder, mm -hmm. any shape exported with this tracking uh, will tracking will be hidden in an extra matrix in in a Nuke because there is a, oh, there nice. is a Nuke. Yeah, so you, you can hide it there. Uh, so it, on top of it will be your manual animation. You can focus on that. Uh, but be, below is going to be hidden the, the tracking for you, yeah? So this is important. Just a few words about tracking because this is important for any user. We implemented the, the point tracker, which I think is very flexible and powerful because it's similar to Nuke ones, uh, the, the one from Nuke. You can place as many trackers as, as you like. Let me just quickly show you. You can like this one, for example. This was a tracker I made for, uh, for the nose here. Uh, you see this tracker working. And you see this is the tracker. And uh, you can, of course, offset tracks. You can export them as a transform node here, like in Nuke. You can mm -hmm. export corner is also from this tool. Uh, and about planar tracking, because this is very important. Planar tracking is coming to Flowbox as well. Uh, we, of course, talking with Mocha about it. They are they are like uh, very nice uh, to us and like willing to to share their the technology with us. Uh, so this is uh, the the process we talk we are in, it, in right now. We, of course, considering also as well implementing our own. A version of a plan tracker inside Flowbox. So don't worry. I mean, this all is going to be nicely covered. Today, you can import the the plan tracker from Mocha. Just drag and drop exported file from uh, from Mocha, which is corner pin, and it's going to work nicely. Oh, in, that's uh, nice. In... So you have some nice integration between the between these tools. Yes. Yes. Definitely. We, we try to be, let's say, very flexible. We're going to bring. Uh, compatibility with also 3D data from camera tracking, so you should be able to bring the point cloud uh, from from uh, Nuke, from Sintai, from 3D Acquire, from other softwares, and just uh, you know use this data to to just uh, place your shapes where you want them to be. Nice man. Yeah. Sounds really nice. Cool. Really pleased with this. So any more any more any more questions from? So we have Ross, NJT from Mark are great. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's really nice that we that we have like a a close relationship with with uh, with the other companies and 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 don't 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 disregard the 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 nice the nice solutions that are they're already in there and actually work together for for creating something something new something fresh. Uh, all right, um, what more? Like we would like some some you guys want to ask any questions? Uh, just 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 let us know. Just I let see us know. some questions here. I see some questions, but I see only the the last. Four questions here. I'm not sure if I can see entire, uh, you know, list of the questions. You can. I mean, you can. 
Uh, uh, okay, okay. But we probably covered. Uh, Dallas Dallas Luther is is asking, uh, can you onion skin the splines? Onion no, skin. We don't, we we don't have onion skin, onion skin in spice. I know it's it's present in in uh, fusion. I really like this uh, this thing. I, I don't even know what it is. <laughs> I don't even know what is what is what is onion skin displays. What 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 is what what is the concept behind it? You know, this is the, the concept. Is, uh, concept is pretty pretty nice because it shows you the uh, let's say the previous and uh, and uh, let's say uh, let's say future and the past. Let's say in terms of animation, so you can see. Oh, okay, okay, I get it. I get it shape fading uh let's say uh, accordingly to the motion right in a time uh -huh. uh, this this comes from classical animation approach i like it really but nice. the, the, thing is, the thing is that uh, it this it is nice if you want to jump between let's say uh for example specific point in time very quickly so you can see this spline but in my opinion that's my opinion maybe i'm wrong um so dallas you can you can of course convince me that, that i'm wrong but i think too many splines in a view using this onion skin effect is actually getting in a way of uh, you know um, operating with with the element I want to extract right so mm -hmm. I rather rather prefer to quickly jump between keyframes like here you can just hold control and just quickly go between keyframes as so if you got the shape for example here let's go to roto you got the shape and couple keyframes you can go control and click jump between them or just uh, scrub with my mouse wheel. I want to just quickly inspect my shape this way, uh, rather than seeing the onion skin. I don't see it super super yeah. useful. I like I like to see where the, where where that hedge is is is, is hitting. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Let me show one more thing here because we have nice lifetime implementation in Flowbox. Uh, because if you have many splines, if you want to hide them, uh, uh -huh. I mean sorry stop to uh, stop to render them yes yeah, because uh, this is the lifetime of the shape so let me show you you can go here and uh, and uh, select the shape which is now okay my shape number zero two and uh, if you want to apply the lifetime you can just uh, hit this uh, icon here which is kind of I think uh, uh, kind of the uh, yeah I forgot the name for that I'm sorry <laughs> the electro electro something heartbeat heartbeat uh, Heartbeat, yes, Heartbeat exactly. monitor. Heartbeat. <laughs> yeah, so, so this is Heartbeat, and okay, so if it's enabled now, uh, you see this is uh, present here in the roto, you got this lifetime zero from, from zero to zero, mm -hmm. and you don't need to type in the numbers. This is cool, because if it's in the uh, enabled, you can go to the timeline, and you can exactly on the timeline set where you want, uh, what you want. Control I for input, uh, let's say lifetime start, and Control O uh, for output. Nice. And that's it. And your shape will be rendered only in this uh, frame. So if you go here now to see the alpha channel, you see it. Uh, it is. Uh, so let me just show you quickly here from from this input maybe to this output, and let's go here. It's off oh. and on. You see, it's just working nicely. And you can adjust it. And you can adjust it here in a, in a timeline. So no problem with that. Cool. Uh, manually. Um, I think there's another question. Uh... Uh, Vadim is asking: Is there is there some control over splines like feathering, size of the mat? Very good question. Thanks yeah. for that. Yeah, absolutely. If you if you like to work with feather, which is not uh, depends on the, on the artist, of course, and which depends is on the case. not ideal, <laughs> but <laughs> fair enough. Like legacy, it's legacy, right? So we need to cover we need to cover beziers. We need to cover feathering. I'm not personally. I'm I'm not I'm not a fan of feather. Like I I, I think that feather is just the exception uh, to to the rule. The rule is letting the interpolation draw the motion blur perfectly. So you 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 roughly have your your spline edge halfway through the hard and the soft edge. But 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 I know I know and I and I see a lot of people that work that were basically putting splines on hard edges and pulling feather. So. It, it's nice and it, it covers some some of the exceptions and and mm -hmm. some of the legacy from 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 the community yeah okay let me show you I mean I think we really try to push this uh, this tool set to be a couple steps ahead of everything so, so let me show you if you go for feathering if you have to do that just select your shapes your points you got these handles for feathering that's a feathering here and uh, of course for beast points you will get the the, the, the similar you know uh, tool and uh, and this is important because in flowbox you can you can manage multiple uh, feather points at the same time no problem with that uh, freely and also you can select uh, only feathers, which is I think Control G. Yes, I think so. And you can manipulate this like like any other shape. So you can rotate, you can scale it up, 
uh, you can play with feathering here. Of course, you can also smooth it up. Yeah? Oh, so this separate. is nice. This is nice actually because I know I, I know a lot of a lot of a lot of companies that 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 actually that actually use feathering as the as the motion blur basis of the, of their roto. And one of the problems that I usually find is that I see I see uh, I see I see people in Nuke just just selecting all the splines and pressing E E E. So it creates like almost a a, a global feather. To, to, to all the splines. So what you're saying is you can actually select all the feather and weight it to one of the sides, so kind of helping with, with drawing the motion blur to the correct side, right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. There's a question from Dallas. If you had similar fade settings as you do with control points, it could be a nice hidden feature. I'm not actually, I'm not fully understand. Can, do you get it? Carlos, if you had similar fade settings, this is this was on our previous on, on our previous thing that we were showing. If you had similar fade settings with the control points, it could be a nice hidden feature. Uh, that's when, when when we were showing the the visibility, the vertex visibility. Mm, right. So you mean like uh, we can we can for example hide these connections or uh, like customize these feather feather elements, right? Regarding yeah. the, regarding the onion skinning. Ah, maybe, yeah. Okay, I get it. I get it. Okay, cool. I think you know. I mean, it's it's pretty flexible as yeah. it is right now. Yeah. And yeah. You, you can of course you can of course uh, customize it, and the, the more customization is coming. But I think you know what is the most important is really like say the performance uh, in terms of interface performance, how you operate shapes, how quickly you can render them out, uh, see them, and uh, animate them. Right. So that these three aspects, uh, let's say, are the my top priority here. What we do. Then we got into the. Um, into the more you know fancy stuff like coloring, so you will be able to color these planes as you like them, like that. Uh, let's say customized view, and and but for example, the interface, let's say seeing vertex or not seeing vertex, is important for speed of of your work because if the points it gets into into way uh, in, when you're working, when you see the line, it slows you down, right? Absolutely. Because you the line. So this aspect is was most important. That's why we started to implement that uh, sooner than later. Right, so this is this is feathers. Also, we have a lasso selection. I don't know if, if there is other other software to uh, with lasso selection with uh, in, a, in a compositing. I don't know. Do you know anyone if with a lasso selection? Lasso selection. Let me just go like for Photoshop, lasso. Photoshop style. Right? Yeah, like, you can select it like that. This is lasso selection. You got these three points. You can move them around. Right. Uh, this is very nice if you have to, let's say, quickly select uh, something which yeah, is yeah, that's nice. Difficult to drag, and of course, switch it on the fly. Yeah, so it, it, it's it's here. All right. So, any other questions? Cool, man. Is there any Flowbox own planar tracking available instead of Mocha tracking? Yeah, there, there is there is development here at Flowbox. So yes, we we definitely you know uh, working on it uh, here. We talk with Mocha as well because to be honest, we really appreciate the the work. It's fantastic planet tracker. So if we if we come to agreement, we, we it's voodoo. We, <laughs> it's what I call voodoo. <laughs> yes, we love it. We love it. I don't know yeah. what Russ did with that, but that is that is still is still no, no matter what people try to do, that is still un, un, unbeatable for me. So it would be it would be nice. Well, if you guys can find a better way of doing it, uh, fair enough. But 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 kudos to 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 uh, Imagineer Systems and Mocha to to create something that helps us so much. Uh, so it, w it would be really interesting to see what you guys are going to be are going to be working on regarding this because it's part it's a major like what, one of the the biggest developments for me in terms of Roto it's the it's the planar tracking integration and, and how do you speed up um, with with point tracking and planar tracking um, so yeah if you are aiming for 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 high quality high quality Roto and high efficiency uh, absolutely we should we should have we should have the that covered yeah. Absolutely, and what's what's cool? I mean, as soon as we implement, let's say, this uh, tracking, you know, uh, as, uh, elements, which is of course point, then planner, then go to 3D tracking, and uh, also uh, we think about smart vectors as well, uh, which is uh, you know, like motion vectors, right, of the image. I mean, all this, uh, let's say, technology is is in place, right? It's here. We it's just it's just a matter of implementation, and now. I would say the the cool part is the idea how to combine these uh, you know elements these uh, these pieces together to help you out with uh, making this quickly right so uh, some some people like to go for uh, tracking the these points on the mat which you have the spline and you want want every point to be a tracker there are some cases which is very useful where it is very useful it is present in flame for example so you can track 
these points separately each each of each of each of the point and also uh, some of the, some of the people like to track uh, this uh, area inside and you know uh, sorry, make I'm not, it not showing i was I, I was not showing i was not showing your screen sorry <laughs> no but i think that's uh, okay sorry that, that i didn't i didn't know but this uh, this is about the let's say the the, the tracking the the points on the, on the, on the shape right mm -hmm. so you we should be able to really quickly manage this track, right? So we should be able to export tracking from point, uh, parent uh, another point maybe to the same, uh, you know, point on the, on the first map, uh, first spline, put them together and track them together if you like. Because um, manual roto is, is uh, sometimes it's uh, even more useful than, you know, automatic tracking. We do something something manually and this Absolutely. can become... A Absolutely. Track, right? So exporting information, exporting information from, from, from your current splines it's uh, yes. it's it's extremely important yeah yeah so you can expect you know this tracking uh, kind of uh, possibilities to grow uh, very quickly in flowbox yes uh, version by, by version you can get more and more uh, around it yes uh, we we actually are really accelerating you know the the team this is pretty late it's 9 9 p.m. Uh, but my <laughs> team usually is working not on on, on saturday not on saturday <laughs> really thank you thank you <laughs> <laughs> but but really you know I, I can tell you you know uh, there is a there's a there's a Chris and Adam uh, two guys uh, in my team and they are so passionate about what they're doing really you know usually I'm getting from them the the new version of flowbox at 1 a.m. in the night I'm getting the new version and they are like ringing you know I'm please Miko please check it out <laughs> I made it. I mean, this is working. You know, please do that. And I'm come on. I mean, this is in the middle of the night, but it's cool. Testing the tool because it's so so amazing. You know, when you have these uh, you know passionate people around you, right? So yeah. So it's it's. Uh, I think everything comes That's from really this. Nice. You know, this craziness around. <laughs> but, so th there's another comment. Uh, so Dinesh Dinesh Chandra Laik is saying I use Flowbox for one two weeks, uh, and I think this software has something special. Production artists like us, from my point of view, because uh, layer layer based and node based uh, in a single software is really awesome and handy. And wrote a new feature is really good. Uh, oh, thanks. Cool. Really so nice. Vadim is asking another question. Just to make it, just to make I got it right, you have different time of interpolation, and you can mix them in the timeline. Uh, so can you mix can you mix different interpolations on the timeline? Can you can you go from linear to to smooth? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I I don't know that maybe I wasn't clear at the beginning. If you go for dop sheet here and you go, uh, you want, you can split this. For example, this keyframe is linear. This is smooth. You can make, I don't know, this to linear if you like. These are now linear keyframes. You can switch it. No problem with that. Yeah. That yeah, is amazing. This, it's fully, fully flexible. You can also, I mean, if we, when we implement the animation layers, you will be able actually to um, adjust this, let's say, this bunch of keyframes with another curve, another curve on top of that, which is also a very sweet uh, tool. Available, for example, in Maya. Uh, yes, we, we are getting a lot of from from 3D software. I think this is uh, this is cool. Uh, for example, soft drag. Uh, when you in a 3D software, you got this, right? So when you move one point, the other points will follow. So yeah, it's it's a it's a fun part actually. You know, developing these these elements. The the hardest part, of course, is to bring this. Uh, systems like uh, proxy modes, uh, efficient proxy system, uh, bringing, uh, pu pu pushing, you know, performance even more, right? This is a difficult part for the development. Um, for this, you know, playing with points, splines, it's, it's, it's just fun. You know, we have a lot of fun doing that. That's really nice, man. Really cool. cool. And from the point of view of the of the of the Roto artists community that I'm that I'm that I'm still proud of, of of being part of that community. This is this is really nice, and it's really cool that you guys are are, are listening to to what we need, because because Roto can be can be tough, and 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 these things uh, um, just ju just just help us go through it, go through the hard times, go through the long hours. So every every single every single tool that that you that you develop and you listen to what people are saying. It's just it's just another friend that you're making. <laughs> it's another friend. So yeah, thanks thanks Carlos for yeah. this. I mean, really appreciate you. Let's say your all, all input and time. I mean, I think without you, I think the flows would be just you know not exactly as cool as it, it will be. I mean, this is different. <laughs> 
way way different you change the, the, the let's say the the, the the vision and then plenty of features i mean that that's that's your that's your excellent work with us so thanks a lot for that i mean just uh just you know to 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 explain that we we all ears right now today we really listen to you guys to artists uh we know this is something you 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 have to face today i mean a lot of work let's say rotoscopy work pretty pretty tedious task uh so uh, really i mean Try to understand that this is also uh, we are not a big corporate, right? This is a small team of you know passionate people around you know this development. Uh, try to understand that it takes time, of course, but uh, I think uh, and I'm really happy because the community, I mean the VFX community, is super like close. We are close to each other. We really know each other, so really supportive, right? Uh, I know people are bitching, you know, they, they want uh, just everything to be ready. At oh, time. yeah, that's that's normal. That's absolutely normal. Yes. We we all complain with, with all the tools, but without those tools, we wouldn't be able to work. So, <laughs> yeah, let, let, let me explain one thing, because you may not be aware of that. I know I realized that, you know, after, let's say, it's maybe second year of development, uh, maybe first one. I realized that, of course, it takes a lot of time. But also what is important is that if you count uh, if you if you calculate, you know how many how many softwares are you know uh, coming uh, to the market new new softwares, right? How many developments are in today? If you if you now start to to count them, okay, we have Autodesk, we have Adobe, we have the Foundry, we have uh, Blackmagic Design with Fusion, we have uh, okay, there was Shake, no Shake anymore. There we have uh, okay, it's almost over. I mean, yeah. It's almost over in terms of compositing tools, right? And most of these tools were st started, let's say, 10, 15 years ago. So uh, why so? Why don't we have, let's say, 20 of 20 of these solutions, right, for for compositing? Um, it's it's pretty simple because it's super uh, difficult to actually to, uh, yeah. to bring something, you know, for the artist for which is like flexible and you know powerful enough and. It's difficult also from from let's say implementation and also adoption uh, time, right? Because you're working on a project, you're busy for next uh, I don't know for your big feature uh, at Skyline. You're gonna work with Nuke. We're gonna work with um, Siwet or Mocha. You you're busy you, for the next four or five months, and Absolutely. we and so we can't even ask you to, to switch tool on the on the go. No possible. So we can look for your one window, small window. We can ask you, okay, please take a look at our software. We are developing something. Check it up, and you can spend maybe one day, maybe no more, and you can tell us some, give us feedback, which is cool. And then out of this, we can craft it better. So uh, we we don't have this uh, comfort being uh, like Nuke at the beginning at DD, uh, developed you know on a daily basis, you know as a, as an internal tool in a studio. This yeah. is a different scenario. We are work, we we depend on you, on a community, on your artists. So um, that's why I'm like humbling, uh, being humble, trying to asking you to to be in contact with us, to support it's us. It's a pleasure, man. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It was it was it was a different di different kind of contact that like like I said to you is like very very interesting to, to see you guys wanting to hear more about the the actual experience of how do you do this it's not that mm. usually I don't say that the, the other companies don't 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 do that it's usually it's not as easy uh, to to get it to get in contact with 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 such this direct connection so say oh you are directly talking with the guy. That is that, that that is in charge of that and 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 pulling the strings and actually thinking about a nice solution. Um, yeah, I think it's a nice addition to the market, man. I yeah, yeah. I, I really appreciate I, that. And I, I and I I I'm I'm glad to be to be to be one of the first to 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 have your 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 um, your software in my in my in my Roto course. Uh, since uh, I'm, I'm launching this this Roto masterclass. Uh, my my signature masterclass that is starting in two weeks, and definitely I want to I want to trial I want to I'm to have hands on uh, this this new software as I'm gonna do with with all the other softwares in the market. So I'm gonna be working with 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 all of them. Uh, but yeah, man, really really glad to 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 have you cool. on board. I'm really happy to hear that. Okay, I think that the very last thing I can I can show I know before we finish. Uh, because it's pretty long right now. Uh, we were talking. Uh, is the some something which is called real-time collaboration? Oh, nice. uh, I'm going to show it to you on uh, on my on my laptop uh, without, let's say, waking up my my, my guys right now. But <laughs> but this is an example that works exactly the same with multiple people around the world, if you like. Uh, so let me <clears throat> let me quickly show that. Uh, so I'll just uh, move my my first flow box to the left. 
I will just, uh, this is my, let's say, server flow box. I hope you can see it uh, yep. properly. Uh, okay, so this is my setup, <laughs> of course, pretty crazy one. And uh, and I want that the idea is that okay, I just got a bit tired because I'm really suck at roto. So that's my that's, these are my shapes, really, <laughs> like, really, really, really mess. Yeah. So I need a, a, a help from, for example, you, Carlos, or some like really serious guy who knows how to do roto. And uh, so what is cool, I can invite him to my setup. And this is uh, something completely new. I know we, we, we kind of used to uh, Google Docs, we collaborate together. I know we got uh, TeamViewer, we try to do use TeamViewer frequently, which is pretty useful. But this is a different situation. We mm -hmm. are actually in a real software, inside the software. And let's, uh, let's start, uh, let's say, uh, now the client. So this is, uh, for example, my friend in, uh, in, I don't know, another country. And he starts a client version of Flowbox. Uh, and this is his Flowbox. Okay, I will put it to the right. Uh, let's just uh, organize the windows. Okay, so this is what he sees on the right side. That's his, uh, his monitor. As you see, we, he got this unsafe project, which where there was the crash. It's remember, remember it. Mm -hmm. Recent pro and there is a joinable project. This is the area you can join as a, as a friend to someone else's setup. So this is my setup called Real Zero One, uh, Zero One. So he can just click, join the project, and as you see, he loads up all the all the tools, all everything here, exactly the same as I have in my master, it's my in my server. Mm -hmm. This is you know this is something really powerful because as you, I can show you now, he can manipulate my 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 setup. You see, he nice. moves it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just disable auto caching because we have in the background always rendering and caching everything for you mm -hmm. so i would just disable, disable it to save memory and so he can manipulate the nodes and i can see that syncing with me and what's it, what is cool we are syncing only shapes properties and that's it we don't we don't uh, we don't sync images because this, the images has to be on the client and the server so we have to synchronize images before but timeline is independent so i can work on on my let's say master setup here i can just view what uh, what the, my friend is doing and my friend if he goes here let's say let's go for let's say frame number 78 here 78 so I can I can see what he's doing he can he can just go in start manipulating points as you see these points are updating on the left side mm -hmm. so whatever he's doing I can see on the fly the output I can for example go for uh, here to, to my flow box check it against the solid color if it's okay or not I can change the color to the background so I can see it better okay I can check his roto without working he's working now you see he's working I'm supervising that's the thing uh, that's nice that's and nice fly, I can I, I can ask more friends to join I can give them their own their uh, roto container so I can bring another roto another roto here you see it shows up also on his side so i can invite more friends and they can start rotoing for me and i can some master i can render out this i can export this to nuke on the fly without asking them to send files send mats uh, and uh, that's it this is really nice I mean, it's almost like a sinusing call um just just one thing that is it possible to synchronize the timelines as well is it something that you are thinking for the future yes Yes, absolutely. There, cool. there, there, will be, there will be timeline sync. There will be also, of course, viewer sync. Everything that is needed for proper review, right? Oh, this, man, is this is nice. Review. This is nice. Yeah. And 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 what I could what I could see here is is adding some notes. So fuck, as a, as a point of view of of, of a roto supervisor, uh, I could easily like sync into to to one of the one of the projects and and just write some notes in in, in certain frames. Uh, this would be this would be really nice. And and yeah. possibly possibly export um, export these notes these notes to I don't know shotgun or 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 whatever. You're just thinking just yeah. thinking uh, ahead in terms of collaboration. How can you bring this? This is this is super powerful. This is for yeah. for for us supervisors, people that 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 do and and QC this kind of work. Um, this is this is very interesting because there's there's nothing better than actually being inside the software to to check a shot because you can you can see everything you can can switch between modes quickly um usually people freak out when you're when you're getting inside a script but it's actually part of your job is like it's just it's just there's no better way to to check something uh than than getting inside in, inside that script and just quickly go through it and stabilize through a couple of splines uh and stuff so 
Yeah, man. Absolutely. Very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, everyone who wants to, let's say, start to kind of uh, sharing this work, uh, quickly managing this, right? I mean, this is this is something we really need, right? For, imagine you are an editor, right, working on an edit, and you have these clips uh, to, all together, and now, okay, I need something to be wrote out. So what to do now? I mean, actually, you don't need to start Roto. You can just start Flowbox, select, bring the footage, export this to, to, to cloud, and ask someone else to pick it up and just uh, join the, his setup. And what is cool, you got this control on your side. You, got, you can control rendering, you can control exporting. You don't have to ask someone else to do that. Actually, someone else has to on, can only focus on shapes, on moving and animating for yeah, you. Yeah. Uh, which, which speeds up a lot. I spoke with Framestore about it, and they, they spent 25% of their time for review, just for process of reviewing the, the roto work, which is a lot of time. If you, even if you can cut half of it, it's, it's a lot of you know, savings. So I think, I think this, is, this is cool for, um, for a single artist for uh, someone who wants, wants just to join, to be this, this guy who will just join as a client and deliver Rota quickly, and, and for supervisors. I think it's going to be a, a big change. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. This is really nice, man. Yeah, uh, I'm really happy. <laughs> thank you very much, Stelimka. Thank you very much for joining us and, and to, to carry on developing, developing this tool. I hope to see it, see it really close, how it develops throughout the next years. Uh, yeah, this is going to be very interesting. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Carlos, for the invitation. Thank you very and much, man. All of you guys to be to be here with us today. I'm really proud, actually. You know that I can I can talk to you. I can let's say show you this stuff. You are you're an amazing artist. I mean, working with this uh, with this uh, let's say in this industry, and uh, and I'm really really proud, especially because we we are in a kind of hard moment in the history. Let's say the last years were not super easy, as everybody knows. Um, and I see that this is slowly going forward, like the de developing really nicely. So we get better, let's say, projects, uh, and uh, and it's just it's just growing. You know, I'm really happy to see that, and I'm happy to be part of it now from from let's see this software point of view, which is for me very cool. Yeah, as a supervisor, I was, I'm always happy working with them. With but but now working with this is excellent. You know, so so cool. Thanks a lot, Carlos, cool. for the invitation. Thank you very much, guys. Remember, you have a code. Uh, Project Road to Comp code if you want to, to have a discount uh, on this software. Uh, remember that, that we, have, we have as well um, the Roto Signature Masterclass starting in two weeks. Uh, we're going to be cover a lot of, lot of nice things regarding Roto, pushing Roto to the next level. Uh, and yeah, thank you very much, Miku. Thank you very much, Matt, that is hiding probably in there. Uh, thank you for the code. <laughs> See you guys around. <laughs> All right. See you, okay. man. See you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. See you guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.